Good morning everybody. Um, here we are on holiday in uh, beautiful Cornwall. We're just about a mile from Land's End in a place called Senan Cove um, and we're on the edge of a cliff face. <laughs> but the, the view is so beautiful um, we thought we would just do a reasonably short morning prayer this morning because what more do you need than what is behind us? Um, that God's is beauty. Crystal blue sky and bright sunshine. We're looking into the sun so we can't really see the camera but I um, hope this is working all right. Yes, yes, I hope it's all right. I'm, I'm sort of shielding my eyes because I can't wear my sunglasses and read. But let's pray. This morning, Thursday morning, September the 24th. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The day lies open before us. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with, for, with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Right, um, we're going to um, just read the New Testament reading, um, but if you wanted to read the Old Testament this morning, it's from 1 Kings, chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. But we're going to read this morning from Acts, um, and Andrew is going to read, if you can see, in this bright sunshine. Yeah, take my glasses off and read close. So from Acts 17, verses 16 to the end. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and also in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Also some Epicurean and Stoic philosophers debated with him. Some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign divin divinities. This was because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to the Areopagus and asked him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? It sounds rather strange to us, so we would like to know what it means. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners living there would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing something new. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, We will hear you again about this. At that point Paul left them, but some of them joined him and became believers, including Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Groping for God. I yeah. wrote in my um, my letter the week before last, before we came away, about 
about retreating, um, which you can do from home. And I, I did put um, a rather good 30 day retreat on the website and uh, not on the website, on the Facebook page. Um, so do have a look at, at that uh, because it's not always possible to get away from home and it looks like we might not be able to get away from our homes at all very shortly. Um, but it's so important sometimes to, to get away and, uh, and spend some time groping with God and we are very lucky, aren't we, here? Mm, um, God's beauty. I think what's also striking as we travel around places like this and on the fringes of the British Isles is is the pre you know the, the presence of God, God's presence, um, not just in the nature, but the way through the ages, a very strong sense of God's presence that our ancestors had in these islands. Um, you know, we visited ancient churches, uh, a thousand years old, and there are still Christian sites from the fifth and sixth centuries are in the area. Um, this was a very Christian nation in, in the early days of Christianity when it came to this nation from Ireland and Scotland. Um, and a little bit later from, from Kent and St. Augustine. Um, and that sense of faith permeated the landscape and, and still does, but, but less so these days, and that's the tragedy. Um, and one of the you know, beauties of being able to come somewhere like this is, is to remind ourselves not just of the awesomeness of God's presence within the nature, but actually of, of um, how humanity has been aware of God through that nature and made the imprint and the presence of God um, present by the churches and the, the holy places and, and, and that prayer that is instilled mm. in the environment. And, and the Christian people mm. of the land and, and that's what we're perhaps lacking in this country now and I wonder, uh, as you say, we've seen places right back to the 4th century Christian presence here um, and I wonder in another thousand years what Christian presence there will be actually living still mm. it's, it's a worrying time but, but for Christians but for churches through this pandemic but not just the we dwell so much on the social side of church, you know, mm. it's lovely to get together and it, yeah. well it is, of course it is, it's normal. Our people who love to be with other people and, but, but that's not what church is about, church is about the worship. Yeah. Um, and, and yes, mm. it is about worship and, you know, I, I, I've wandered in this pandemic and going into churches and seeing these empty buildings. Um, and being reminded by people I know quite well, sort of saying, oh, well, I'm not sure if we'll come back to worship afterwards. Well, if we who are faithful don't come back to worship, there will not be a church in this land to worship in. They will remain empty buildings and they will get used for something else. Um, and that faith will be lost. So there's something, there is something incumbent upon us, actually, a responsibility in our faith not just to live it out personally in our own particular way. We're very good at that in the Western world. Yes. Individualism. Yes, it's definitely. a private matter. Mm. But no, that's not the way the Christian faith ever was. It was never a private matter. It's a community of faith. Um, and if we as corporate individuals don't take responsibility for continuing that faith both individually and corporately, then we will lose it and this land will lose it. Um, and that's a frightening prospect for what um, what could be. It is. It's probably dangerous us going on retreat. We can go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll leave it there, and uh, well, I think we'll just have a a few quiet moments of prayer. Really, I don't know whether you can hear the sea uh, behind us uh, on this small microphone, um, but just the sound of the sea, the reminder of the eternity of God, maybe, and then after a few moments of silence I'll read the collect for today, which is um, particularly apt. And then we'll carry on our walk. We've been walking around the coast path, a very, very demanding uh, nine, ten mile walk the day before yesterday, very up and down, and we're carrying on a six mile walk today round Land's End yeah. and further around. It doesn't sound very far, but over these rocks and these <laughs> cliffs, it's hard going. Mm, yes. So um, let's just have a few moments of silence.
Let's pray. And just lift to God all our own concerns, our concerns for our country, our concerns for our church, our concerns for ourselves and those whom we love. And let's just place them into God's hands because he knows everything that's in our hearts. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, Grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Amen. Amen. Bless you on whatever you're doing, and we're counting our blessings to be here in this beautiful countryside. And, and we'll leave you to it now. Bless you. God Goodbye. bless. Bye bye. Bye bye.